Everybody hates Tesla. Tell me something new. Now, guys, I didn't get any of my emails that said somebody was coming after me for false or bad investment advice. So again, don't come after me, normies. We're going to continue this video. This video is going to get down into why Tesla is the next one up, why it hasn't reached its moment of truth. It has increased. That is true in its potential, but there's so much more room for a Tesla to grow. And there's so many more products and services that it will be provided by Tesla and will generate revenue. And that's the main focus of diving deep into the business. Now the clickbaits and the Twitter and the headlines are not of my concern. I leave that to other people to defeat those false narratives right here on this channel. Everyone hates Tesla. We're going to dive deep down into the company and see like, do they really hate Tesla or is Tesla not delivering? Let's continue this video. We're just about to move into the vertical integration strategy. And that's going to be explained a little bit more. And if you don't know what vertical integration is, Google it. And therefore, the saleability. Now, let's look at Apple. And then we circle back to Tesla and the actual valuation numbers. Apple have mastered the art of integrating hardware and software. While they don't manufacture every component, they design their own chips, create the operating system, and control the entire user experience from the moment you walk into an Apple store to when you update your iPhone. And Tesla does the same thing. And I will actually dive a little bit deeper where Tesla actually does design more components. That's why it's the most American made car in the United States of America. See, now Apple is not the most American made phone in America, but definitely Tesla with it, massive amounts of parts that come with actually building out a car more so than building out a phone. <clears throat> Foxcom, <clears throat> TSMC, who actually do majority of the work. At Tesla, we mostly do the work. <clears throat> American businesses, <clears throat> American vendors, <clears throat> American factories. So then again, not only do we have vertical integration, we actually manufacture, process, and assemble majority of the car all around. And while Apple does not do it, they still do control from the store all the way down to the service, that vertical integration. And guess what we do at Tesla? We also do that too. We have changed the high entire process of how you purchase a car with Tesla. The dealership model is obsolete when you're dealing with Tesla. You're dealing with the company, street, live, and direct versus dealing with these guys that are at dealerships trying to negotiate and haggle a price with you. That's the good part about it. So anyways, let's continue. I just wanted to point that out, that we actually do that. And also, we actually create our own batteries. And then also, we're actually building out our own factory, too, that's been built in America that will refine lithium ion. I mean, vertical integration to the highest. This integration allows Apple to create seamless ecosystems that keeps consumers coming back. It's like they're not just building a house but an entire neighborhood where everything works together perfectly. Amazon, on the other hand, has vertically integrated in a different way. They started as an online bookshop, but now control much of their logistics chain. They've built their own warehouses, delivery networks, and even a cloud computing platform that powers a significant portion of the internet. By bringing these operations in-house, Amazon has not only reduced costs, but also improved efficiency. In 2019, they delivered 3.5 billion packages themselves, up from zero just a few years earlier. So what's the common thread here? Tesla, Apple, and Amazon have recognized that controlling key aspects of the operations gives them a significant competitive advantage. It's like they're not just playing the game, they're just writing the rules. For Tesla, this means they can innovate faster in critical areas like battery technology, autonomous driving. For Apple, it results in a user experience that's hard to replicate. And for Amazon, it translates into unparalleled efficiency in e-commerce and cloud services. Now, vertical integration isn't without its challenges. It requires massive upfront investments and can be risky if market conditions change. But for these tech giants, the gamble seems to be paying off. And for Tesla, still in the early stages of its vertical integration journey, the potential upside could be enormous. As they continue to bring more aspects of production and innovation in-house, we might see efficiencies and innovations that could propel them to new heights. Think about robots replacing all staff, for example. Right? And then you can sell those robots to everybody else, much like Amazon has done with their cloud computing platform. And not only sell those robots, but also maybe not even sell them, lease them, right? Lease them out, revenue service, no different than an actual employee, but at a lower cost. So sell, lease, all these are going to be realistic options. And even when you lease them out or when you sell them out, they'll still need servicing. 
coming from our artificial brain, coming from our neural network. And remember, a large amount of investment, the cortex of the AI, right, GPUs, I would better call them MPUs, but yes, GPUs, is worth $1 billion for the cortex that has just been put up online. $1 billion in cash. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of capital that needs to be invested. A lot of companies don't even have a billion in cash flow, let alone to actually invest a billion in research and development. And even me as a shareholder, that's why I don't care about dividends. Let's put this money back in the company to create more value and create a more effective and efficient company. Platform. But let's talk about the captains that steer these tech times. You've got Elon Musk, Steve Jobs. Stop sending documents back and forth for signatures. Nobody cares, bro. Stop wasting my time with videos. No, no longer with us, unfortunately. And Jeff Bezos. Three names that can make stock markets swoon faster than my golden retriever chasing after a faster squirrel. First up, we've got Elon. Tesla's very own Tony Stark, minus the iron suit, known for his, shall we say, colorful presence on social media. Musk has a knack for making headlines. Known for rockets. Known for being the best inventor in the United States of America. Known to be a J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, a Vanderbilt, and a B, uh, B, a W. Bowen, all built into one in a Henry Ford. That's how I know him. I really don't waste my time with tweets. Like, that's some childish things. Like, well, he's known for what he says online. Uh, I know people for mostly what they do. Whether he's launching cars into space or naming his child after a math equation, he keeps the world guessing. But behind the memes and controversy, Musk's vision has driven Tesla to the forefront of the EV revolution, and in my opinion, to some new revolutions we're about to experience. The leadership style, well, move fast and break stuff. But with rockets and electric cars, Musk is known for setting seemingly impossible goals and then somehow willing them into existence. Then we have the late Steve Jobs. Not somehow. First rule principle. But let's continue. The turtleneck-wearing wizard of Apple, Jobs was known for his reality distortion field, a charisma so powerful it could convince engineers that the impossible was merely a suggestion. His attention to detail was legendary. I heard he once rejected an iPhone prototype because the screen's corner was 0.1 millimeter off. Talk about perfectionism. Jobs' leadership was all about creating products people didn't even know they wanted. He didn't believe in focus groups because, in his words, people don't know what they want until you show it to them. It's like he had a hotline to the future. And then last but not least, we have Jeff Bezos, the man who turned a humble online bookstore into a company that sells everything. Bezos is known for his consumer-obsessed approach and his famous laugh that sounds like a supervillain who just won the lottery. Let's look a bit like one too, doesn't he? What's his leadership style here look like? Well, think long term, really long term. Bezos is famous for his day one philosophy, always operating Amazon as if it's still a startup. He's also known for his two pizza team rule. If a team can't be fed with two pizzas, it's too big. Maybe also too expensive to feed. I wonder if you ever met the Winston. Yeah, well, that's pretty interesting. But yes, because a lot of companies do have to worry about that. Now, normies don't care about that. They just want to get hired and receive paychecks. But as a company that's wanting to continue to operate and be sustainable, right, and in a state alive, it has to worry about such things. So these are things that maybe Jeff Bezos and things like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs think about and actually do. And a lot of CEOs, just like the CEO, Isaac Walton, who was the head of the New York Times, I believe, he said he didn't care. He didn't want to fire people, you know? He wanted everybody to have town's car. Everybody could just have fun. It was just like socialism, you know? It was like, hey, it's on the company's tab. Let's spend all the money. Let's not worry about actually making a profit. Let's not worry about being sustainable. We're just going to spend money and have a great life, YOLO. And so some CEOs are like that. That's their mindset. And then others are not. They're going to make sure that the business not only survives, but thrives. That rule might need some adjusting. Now, what do these three leaders have in common? Vision, determination, and disruption. They've all shown an uncanny ability to see around corners and anticipate and shape future trends. More importantly, they've been able to rally their teams around these visions and execute them relentlessly. For Tesla and Elon Musk, this visionary leadership translates into pushing the boundaries of what's possible in EVs and renewables. Just like Jobs did with personal computing and Bezos with e-commerce, Musk is redefining an entire industry and possibly many more industries to come. This leadership factor is crucial when we consider Tesla's potential for growth, because let's face it, in the world of tech and innovation, 
a visionary leader can be worth their weight in lithium batteries. Now, let's finally hop into our financial time machine and compare Tesla, Apple, and Amazon at similar stages in their growth journeys. Wins Ooh, now that's going to be interesting, but we're at the 10-minute mark. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. The next one, we'll be talking and diving into the financials. Mm -hmm. I got to knock it up at three points. You know, your guys' attention span is very short. So we got to get it underneath 10 minutes. It is what it is, but we'll see you on the next one. We're going to do it big. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys on the next episode. Everyone hates Tesla. We're going through the financials on the next